I'm Ben, and this is my re full review of the new Super Mario Brothers movie. I had a really great time watching that when I first watched it in the theaters, and I watched it dozens of times. I And now I'm going to do a full review, similar to I did a full review for the live-action one. I And uh, as you can see, I really love the movie. I have a, a big poster right there. I have, like, figures. I collect a lot of action figures based on it. I... I feel real, it was a really great movie, and I really highly recommend it. Um, I was disappointed when it did got a green splat, but it, uh, when I hear the critics, all it's like, oh, there's cameo, there's so many cameos, oh, it's a Cell movie, it's a Nintendo product, and I'm like, no, it's just a Mario movie. I mean, is the Marvel Cinematic Universe a commercial for comics? Is the Universal Monster movies a commercial for books? No, uh, no, come on. Like, it's a really fun movie. So let's do our full review of the best of the animated Super Mario Brothers movie. So let's -a go! Okay, so the movie starts with the minions doing a race car, which I pay tribute to Mario Kart, which I really like and find it funny. But, and then it goes to the Mario intro, which I really like that they did a Nintendo intro with the Mario Brothers. Uh, I thought that was fun because I remember seeing the Sega logo and the Marvels in the DC logo and I was hoping they would do their own logo for Nintendo and I really love how they did it here. And then we introduced to the Snow Kingdom and then Bowser tries to evade there and I really like the cinematic music. <laughs> People who did the orchestra because it's teamed up with the guy who did the music for the video games but also with a cinematic course and the music in it is just perfect and I love how they did the animation the animation really captures what Mario Brothers is and what and the look and the design it just makes me happy every time I I look at it it's very illumination but here's the thing the two directors were the same people who are the showrunners for Teen Titans Go and you can kind of see like maybe some of the character models but it's still being illumination trying to be like Nintendo's animation which is still great of how they did them all okay so then it opens with the penguins and how the penguins come in and try to attack Bowser with snowballs was a lot of fun and they're just these cute little penguins there's a scene where the Koopa Trooper that gets hit by an ice cube that because in the trailer he sounded like a Koopa Trooper, but then he sounded l like a normal person for a reason. <laughs> I don't know why they did that, but anyway, so... And there's a Penguin Kane voiced by who you remember as Cyborg from Teen Titans Go. That is but a taste of our fury! Do you yield? Perhaps you'll like our next move better. It is my great pleasure to present for the first time anywhere. And yeah, there are two actors that voiced the characters from Teen Titans Go. Like, like even Scott Menville plays a character. He voices like a Koopa Trooper and a Toad. Just leave it, there's no time! Did he say Mary, their princess? Are all these moves just going to be some dumb combination that starts with you throwing each other? I've heard enough. Titans, go! And the king is really funny and so cute and he has this serious demeanor and he's like, do you yield? And, and Bo's like, nope. And also, Jack Black as Bowser is really fantastic. Like, at first I didn't even recognize him as Jack Black. Like, when I hear him as Bowser, I hear Bowser. Open the gates, or die. Like, I was watching this with my aunt and uncle, and even they didn't know that was Jack Black. So, Bowser tries to steal the Superstore. At first, I thought it was, like, the stars from, like, the Super Mario 64 games, or even the Mario Galaxy games, but it's actually a, the Super Invincible Store, because he, he has a plan to... He wants to use it to destroy the Mushroom Kingdom if Princess Peach doesn't marry him, but we'll get to that in a sec. 
And then it gets to the fun part. Do 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 do. Oh, we're the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. When your sink is in trouble, you could call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Huh. It, it plays the Super Mario Super Show theme in a plumber's commercial, which I really love. And it's a, a tribute to the original Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Oh, we're the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're with the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. Oh, so here's something people think. The woman in that commercial, everyone thinks it's the original actress who voiced Princess Toadstool in the Super Show. Because she does kind of sound like her, like even I thought it. It was. Thank you, Super Mario Bros. It seems like the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. I sure hope Mervyn the Magician can help me free my people from the evil King Koopa. But it's actually voiced by Jessica Dicato, uh, forgive me for pronouncing that name wrong, who you might recognize as the voice of Flame Princess in Adventure Time. Thank you for building my new home, Finn. I'm so happy. And other voices, and she does a lot of different voices, like the Mario Brothers mom and even Pauline. Well, I thought it was incredible. It belongs in a movie theater. Everything is under control, I promise you. We are very close to fixing this. But yeah, she does sound a lot like the original actress who played Princess Toadstool in the Super Show, but but no, it's J Jessica. And now we get to Mario and Luigi, and I really like how they're designed, and it just reminds me how I really like the animation. Like other animations, like Spider-Verse is a masterpiece, but I really love how they faithfully capture Mario in this. Like if you're a Mario fan, you would love how they animated everything. And it is fun that Punch-Out opens a pizza restaurant, which I really love how they did that and you see pictures of the characters and there are a lot of cameos I think if I point out all the cameos we'll be here all day but it is fun to point out all the cameos like Mario's pixely face so Chris Pratt as Mario he's okay I would have preferred Charles Martinet but I think there's a reason why they couldn't get Charles Martinet like maybe they thought because in the video games he only does a few voices <laughs> so I think Maybe having him d do that voice through an entire movie might irritate people too much. Like, for Mario fanatics like us, we would have been okay with it. But I feel like other audiences might find it a bit too much. Even they say it was too much. Uh, what about the accents? Is it, is it too much? But, because it's interesting that they open him doing the traditional accent. It's me, the Mario and the Luigi. Are you tired of paying too much for plumbing? But... Not in throughout the rest of the movie, because I remember watching the first trailer, and Bowser, like, Jack Black sounded like Bowser, and Kevin Michael Richardson sounded exactly what, because I didn't even know that was Kevin Michael Richardson voicing Kamek, because when you hear his voice in other roles, It's muscle, not blubber. But they will not save you. And he sounds what you would think Kamek would sound. Behold, the king of the Koopas! And even Kiko Michael Keen, like, because I thought he would do a very deep voice for Toad. I'm y'all substitute teacher, Mr. Garvey. But he sounds exactly what Toad would sound like. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that one's perfectly fine. But Chris Pratt is just used, doing his traditional Chris Pratt voice. But, you know, I think if you get used to him, you're fine with it. It does kind of remind me, you ever watch those cartoons where one of the characters switch brains, but they also switch voices? It kind of sounds like that. I told you not to get near the brain switcher. No, you didn't. Well, I was thinking it. Also, they do pay tribute, and Charles Martinez does a cameo of this character named Giuseppe, and it is a reference to their voice. Too much? It's a perfect. Wahoo! Okay, I'm gonna trust you. There is so many references in this one shot alone, like... Giuseppe, the character, is voiced by Charles Martinet, like I said, and he does in his Mario voice, which is paying tribute. And if you look at the design of him, he's modeled after the original Donkey Kong design from the original arcade game. And if you look at the arcade game he's playing, it's actually modeled after the original Donkey Kong, and it's called Jumpman, which is the original title for Mario when he first debuted in Donkey Kong. So... There's like four references in this one shot alone. 
And then we're introduced to Spike, and Spike is voiced by, forgive me if I'm butchering this name, but it's Sylvester Menacerco. He's voicing Spike, and I've seen some of his comedic roles. He's actually pretty funny, but he's voicing Spike in this, and I didn't know who Spike was. When I first heard he was voicing a character named Spike, I thought, like, you mean one of Cooper's cousins from the 1993 film? But he says they're the Mario Brothers boss, but Spike was the character from the game Wrecking Crew. I did play them on the Nintendo Switch with the NES library, so I ha and I had a really great time playing that, and that helped me get to know Spike a bit more, and, it, and how they did Spike was very funny. He's in it for a couple of scenes in the beginning and the end, but I was kind of prepared for that, because you want to stick to the Mario Brothers characters we know from the games. And also, Charlie Day voices Luigi in this, and if you're familiar with Charlie Day in other roles, like, he actually does sound really great as Luigi. Like, he doesn't do Luigi's traditional voice. Yeah, I'm a winner. As a matter of fact, Spike, we have. But he does fit the character pretty well, and I really like how he plays him. And you get to know their characters, like Mario's brave and faces anyone who's bigger than him. And Luigi is kind of scared, which really ties into what their characters are like in the video games. Also, I do like the little GameCube phone sound with Luigi's cell phone. Also, I do love that the Mario Brothers logo, like from the new Super Mario games, is the same logo on their van. I really love that. I love how they did that. Also, there's a running scene where it pays tribute to... Like, they run into this construction place and they place tribute to the original first game, which I really love how they pay tribute to that, and it does tie in to, like, them running around in the Mushroom Kingdom world. Now, they go to this husband and wife couple, to try to fix their plumbing and they run into this dog and I think this is a lot of fun of them almost being killed by a dog and trying to fix this plumbing and also he, Luigi says hellhound that hellhound is gonna escape you gotta love a, a kids movie that has at least one or two swear words in it but anyways and yeah I wasn't gonna point out too much cameos but I do love the Pikmin and the Duck Hot Dog and the Tetris cameos. Also, when I first heard Illumination, and I remember watching The Secret Life of Pets, I was thinking, I wonder what Mario and Luigi would look like in this animation style, and it's funny that there is a scene that kind of reminds me of Secret Life of Pets with the dog, but anyways, they finish their job and they go to their home, where they run into their families. Now, their families were never really in the video games, but I actually like that they added this. I like that we actually get to see that they're have their families. And Charles Martinet voices Mario Luigi's dad, which is a good in-joke. Everybody loves mushrooms, right? And I do like seeing that they have a mom and their grandparents, and they have a niece. Some suggest that if Mario and Luigi have another brother or sister, but they never really clarified that. But yeah, I really like how they did this family, and they do kind of feel like a bit of an Italian stereotype, but Mario and Luigi is always been kind of criticized as Italian stereotypes, but you, you kind of picture they would have a family like this, and they even kind of resemble them a bit. Also, Mario hates mushrooms in this. Ah, mushrooms? Um, I don't know how to feel about Mario hating mushrooms, because isn't this like making a prequel to Bugs Bunny and doing an origin story about him, but in the beginning he hates carrots, so that just kind of feels like they're going against the character. I mean, they never really say he ate in mushrooms at the time in the video game, so... But maybe he, they might grow to like him when he's using them as power-ups later. Also, I love that he, later Mario is playing an NES game and it's Kid Icarus, and I thought that was a really great callback. And you can kind of see, like, the F-Zero game posters and uh, Star Fox Rocket. So Luigi goes to talk to Mario, and I really like this sweet moment, And but then they see Mayor Pauline, yeah, from Mario Odyssey, she's the mayor of Brooklyn, which is pretty cool that they did that, and Mario's like, Luigi, we gotta save Brooklyn, like, this is our chance to prove ourselves, so 
they go down and they go to this pipe place and you even see the level level one two which is a nod to their games of course and they go down to the pipe and then we finally get to the mushroom kingdom and i really like how they did the mushroom kingdom and i really like how beautiful everything is and we get to run into toad and you hear the little toad theme to me. please to meet you i'm toad uh, and then Luigi is trapped in the dark worlds, and there is not to like Luigi's mansion. Where are you? Huh? And he's being chased by dry bones, which is almost kind of freaky. And then he runs into the shy guy and he goes to the castle, which is kind of like a nod to the games where they go to like the second castle but I saw some concept art that he was originally gonna run into booze like from those little round ghosts which also they don't appear in this movie which is a bit disappointing but we do see King Boo but I would like to see some booze from like the original game but oh well maybe in a sequel but anyways they go to the mushroom kingdom like the whole castle village and you do see all the pain tribute like the toads punching the coin boxes and you do see like the little chest from like super mario Bros. 3 and they do play the music <laughs> You see the little cap store from Mario Odyssey, and I think you hear the original actress's toad voice in one of the toads. Shetro! Nice to see you, bud! And I love that every scene you go, there's like cinematic music from the Mario games. Wait up! So they finally go to the Princess Peach castle, and there's a nod to like the princess in, in another castle, which I found funny. Wait, I did. Our princess, though, is in another castle. And then they meet Princess Peach. She's voiced by Anna Taylor Joy, with, and she does a good job doing this version of Princess Peach. She's not the typical damsel in distress, and like, she actually tries to help Mario try to rescue Luigi to defeat Bowser, but. Yeah, in this version, Luigi gets captured and Mario and Princess Peach have to team up. Because I guess we've seen the whole fairy tale of a princess getting captured, so it would have been a bit generic. And this does make sense because Luigi and Mario have a connection and Princess Peach right now don't know each other, so they can't form a romance if they haven't got to know each other and they wouldn't have a reason to go save her. So this is a good reason, but... I would have liked this to be like a Super Mario Brothers movie, like them teaming up, but like Mario and Luigi going on an adventure together, but hopefully they do that in the sequel. But there is a scene where Mario and Luigi do team up and save the day, and we'll get to that later. And there are times where Luigi gets kidnapped, like in Super Paper Mario and Super Mario 3D Land. And there are times where Princess Peach does is a playable hero character like in Super Mario Bros. 2 and Super Mario 3D World. Also, there is a cool scene where, where Princess Peach has to train Mario, which I really like, and I like how they build the place. And there is a scene where it goes night and day, and you kind of think, like, doesn't, like, some people point it out and they say, like, doesn't Princess Peach need to get to the Jungle Kingdom? Like, she's running out of time here, but she did say she'll leave in the morning. I'll leave for the Jungle Kingdom in the morning. So this is pretty okay, so... But then it cuts to a scene where Bowser is... And there's cool rock and roll music, and you do see all the minions all together, and Goombas, and I... And I love that they're more faithful than in the 1993 movie. Well, of course they are. I love that you really got the Goombas right. They don't focus much on the Goombas. They focus on the Koopa Troopers. But he is the king of the Koopers. So it makes sense for this. And it's revealed that he, won't, he wants to steal the Power Stars. Because he's wanting to marry Princess Peach. I will ask their princess to marry me in a fairy tale wedding! <laughs> <laughs> I I think that's really funny because I guess it makes sense because I when I played the Mario games I thought he, like maybe he just wants to threaten to take over the Mushroom Kingdom but yeah having her marry him like there are versions like in Mario Odyssey and even in this comic like there's even a wedding scene that's exactly like the Super Mario Adventure comic which I 
recommend people should read. It's the artwork is very fantastic, and and like I said, there's like a scene with the wedding, and there's a wedding cake. Like that kind of reminds me of like Mario Odyssey and the graphic novel I just showed you. But yeah, this kind of feels something Ice King would really do. Like very very Ice Kingy. So anyways, Luigi gets captured by the shy guys, and you do see a really cute scene where they're babies, and they have black eyes, which people theorize are their toads, but yeah, they had black eyes in the original games, but the other human characters didn't have them in Brooklyn, so people kind of have their own fan theories about it. Also, some people theorize that this little boy might be a Wario in the future because in the source material they grew up as kids but I don't know. Also Mario and Princess Peach finally go on their adventure and Toad comes along too. A Toad brave enough to join me. Um what about Princess Peach's guards? Like aren't weren't they brave enough to join her? Like I guess they have to stay at the castle but oh well. Well, anyways, they go on the adventure, and you do see all these cool landscapes, like the desert, and the Yoshis, and the fish, which is a tribute to the first game. But, here's the thing, a lot of people say that the movie is short, like it is an hour and 20 minutes, but you could have made it an hour and 40 minutes or something. Because, like, you could have dedicated that time to really get to know these landscapes, like, don't just show the desert with the floating upside down pyramid have them go on it and ride the lion like in mario odyssey or or really explore the pyramids there or don't just go by the yoshis have them ride a yoshi or explore the yoshi places like like it's mario we love exploring the worlds in the video games have us explore the world in here also there's a song bowser sings that's about princess peach which i find really fun like I knew Bowser was gonna sing a song because it's Jack Black so and this is a really lovely song to listen to when you are in a good mood it like you really listen to how fun and lovely the song can be peaches, 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 peaches. and now we get to this fire flower land and Princess Peach gets a fire flower, but Mario never got a fi fire flower throughout the movie. Like Donkey Kong got a fire flower, but and Mario almost got a fire flower, but he never gets a fire flower. Like isn't that one of the most main power ups in the entire game? So it's kind of weird that he never gets a fire flower power up. I kind of wanted to see that, but I am happy about the power ups. He gets like the Invincible Star, the Tanuki Leaf. The mushroom that makes him big. Also, I want to bring up the mushroom that makes him big. At first, he has it as normal size, but then he eats the mushroom and gets a bit bigger and taller. I don't know. Like, when I played the games, because I always thought the main Mario they show where he's taller, like, I thought that was the main Mario. So, and then maybe something happens to him, like some Koopa magic that, that made him smaller. So, and he has to eat the mushrooms to turn bigger also they have to eat the mushroom when i played the games i always thought like maybe he touches the mushrooms but here he eats them oh also princess peach is not native to the mushroom kingdom she actually is probably from the real world because she came out of the pipe they never reveal who her parents are but when i played the games i thought maybe she was native to the mushroom kingdom like maybe she had royal parents but no they never really explained that in the video game so she probably they we don't know who her parents are in the real world so but they never really explained that in the video game or in the movie but maybe they might explore it later like even mario said maybe you're from my world hey maybe you're from my world so then bowser interrogates luigi and then they go and it gets sealed in this place where you get to see this funny evil star that says all these evil parts that I know from Super Mario Galaxy. But it's funny that they made them this cute little thing that says all these dark horrendous things. It's, a, it's really funny. In an insane world, it is the same who is called crazy. Time, like hope, is an illusion. There is no escape. The only hope is the sweet relief of death. And then we get to the Donkey Kong, the Jungle Kingdom, which, or the Kong Kingdom, but I think they call it the Jungle Kingdom. And they play this song, Take On Me, which I 
which I do like the song Take On Me. It, it is an interesting choice that they do there, and there's a lot of different songs they play around in this, but Take On Me is a really great song, and I bet, and how much do you bet all those billions of views on YouTube was because of this movie, but I actually heard rumors that it might have been the Donkey Kong Country theme they might have played, and well, I like to see a cinematic music of the video games here, so here's something I can play for you. <laughs> We get to Fred Armisen as Cranky Con. I heard that people didn't like him, and he does sound a bit strange. Like, I can't tell if he's being sarcastic in some parts or sincere, so it is a bit confusing. What makes you think you're worthy of fighting alongside the greatest army in the world? But there's, they finally go to this jungle tournament where Mario has to fight Donkey Kong, which is a nod to like the Smash Brothers and even the Donkey Kong Arcade uh, Anvil level. And Seth Rogen voices Donkey Kong. Um, he sounds pretty good. I can picture his normal voice working for Donkey Kong, but it's just when you hear him doing gorilla voices in the original video games, it does sound different from how he usually talks. <laughs> and I even heard like Seth Rogen doesn't really do different voices, like he just uses his normal voice. But it sounds alright in this, and so then they have a cool fight. And then Mario gets the mini mushroom, which I thought was pretty cool because I love the new Super Mario Brothers game for the DS and it was one of my favorite childhood Mario games to play. And then we get the cat mar power up, which I thought was really adorable. Like, the cat power up is in this, and he takes down Donkey Kong, and then he wants the battle, and then they have a plan to ambush Bowser. So they create all these cards, and I love the little nods, like the, the, like the sounds from when you get the power ups, and you get to decide either cart, wheels, or glider. And which is kind of a nod for like the Mario Kart 8, which I love. And then they show him getting spray paint, and you see him wearing the Mario Kart cart, and I love that. Also, Princess Peach chooses a motorcycle, and did they just had a jumpsuit lying around for her? Like you get, you make your own cart, but you get your own jumpsuit too. <laughs> that's that's fun. And, and then they get ready to go, and. Bowser dresses up with a wedding groom hat, and he has piranha flowers, which is like in Mario Odyssey, which I thought was really funny. And you see Kamek dressing as Princess Peach, which is a nod to New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And even he was like, what? Like, he didn't want to interrupt the moment, which I found funny. So then Donkey Kong and... Princess Peach, Mario, and Toad go on the Rainbow Road. Yeah, I, and I was really excited to see Rainbow Road. I really like how they did everything there. And it just looks really beautiful how they animated this. So Bowser finds them and ambushes them. And there's this whole big chase, which is really awesomely animated. Like, it's like Mad Mario Rainbow Road, and it's... And you see all the actions. I was a bit disappointed that Mario's card got exploded. And also, they do the blue Koopa shell, like, blue shell! And he explodes on them. But did he literally explode? Like, you don't see him existing at all. Like, he just disappeared and you don't see him later in the movie. So, did the blue Koopa died? You know, it was really unclear. But anyways, Donkey Kong and Mario get eaten by an eel, and then they have a scene where they talk to each other, but I was hoping, like, they could really dive in. Like, there's a scene where at least your dad doesn't think you're a joke. Yeah, well, my dad thinks you're a joke, too. Like, yeah, well, your dad's right, but I was kind of hoping, like, maybe they can be, like, like, maybe they can dive in. Like, maybe Donkey Kong says your dad thinks you're a joke, too. Yeah, so... And they dive into that, but it is pretty funny how they did what they did here, and they do find a way to escape, which is a lot of fun. But then Princess Peach gets captured by Bowser, and then they do the wedding thing, which is a nice nod to, like I said, the 
Super Mario comic and Super Mario Brothers Odyssey. Oh, so you get to see King Babam and King Boo there. So, I, and there were enemies in the game. So, so this is funny to see them at their wedding, which is a lot of fun. Oh, so does the wedding cake is modeled after blood? Like, it looks like it was made to look like blood. Like, it could have been lava. Cause, but it really kind of almost looks like blood almost. That's crazy. But anyways, Mario and Donkey Kong come to the rescue and you get to see them jumping and throwing power-ups and which is basically like the video games in a nutshell, which I really love. And then Princess Peach uses the ice flower. It's like, you really thought I'd marry you? And then Mario finally saves Luigi and they finally bond together. And Donkey Kong saves his dad, which is pretty awesome. But then Bowser gets really angry and then he re released the bomber bill or bonsai bill but he calls it the bomber bill and it was almost gonna blow up the castle oh so have you noticed in the 1993 one they kind of had an ending similar with the bonsai bill which is pretty funny and there's also a scene where they fight in brooklyn which is a weird nod but anyway so mario tries to stop the bomber bill and the bomber bill tries to chase after mario then it escapes in the green pipe and explodes and then the whole castle comes to Brooklyn which I really thought was pretty cool where they did the final battle here also I thought it was pretty interesting that in the video games Bowser has like a airship but he also has a castle so with them merging like having it be like a castle flying airship was pretty cool how they did that it's very different but Anyways, when I thought of Brooklyn, like, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if they made a Mario movie and then all the Mario villains try to attack the Brooklyn and then they have to save the day on Brooklyn? But they actually done it here and it's pretty awesome how they did it. And Luigi comes helping Mario to help save the day and he saves him, which is a very beautiful scene. And then they... They get the Superstar, and it's really awesome hearing the Superstar theme and trying to fight them. Oh, so I noticed some parallels between Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie and this scene where they get the invisible power, and then they have to fight the main villain, and there's almost a scene where the villain is happy and that they thought they defeated the hero, but then they get more powerful, and then they there's a big punch, but they see how powerful they are, which I thought it was pretty neat what are the chances this is it, it was probably a coincidence but it was still pretty amazing that they did that that happened and i love this little nod oh hey spike luigi which is pretty funny and then they do the whole super mario 64 spin and take them down and i love seeing mario and luigi team up and fight bowser like that's what i want to see in the movie like if it be a mario brothers movie and i love seeing that together and then they finally defeat Bowser he eats a mini mushroom and he gets trapped in there and then Mario and Luigi's parents come in and they were really proud of him and it's a really lovely scene and Donkey Kong hugs all of them which I thought was really funny and you see everyone cheering and even Spike going let's hear it for the Super Mario Brothers and I love that they were called the Super Mario Brothers even with their plumbing company because it makes sense because of their uniforms and their theme so I thought that was awesome and th the next scene is revealed that Mario and Luigi now live in the Mushroom Kingdom they buy the house there and they have all their stuff from the room and they're in a little toad house and now they live in the Mushroom Kingdom and it does tie in to like how they live in the Mushroom Kingdom in like the video games and you see the Mario Brothers logo and the blue star comes back and it's like no, that's a happy ending or is it and you hear the mario credits and when i saw the mario credits at the theater everyone applauded and i applauded and i was so happy and it was the best time i had in the movie oh so i love the mid credit scene with the peaches peaches song and he's small and he's like you can't treat me like this i'm bowser <laughs> i thought that was a lot of fun and it was a really great movie. It's hard to believe they had to wait 30 years to make a movie. Like, that's how bad the other live-action movie bothered them. But maybe because... Here's the thing. My guess was because 
When the 1993 live-action Mario movie came out, the video game has been around for 8 years and only kids really understood and loved Mario's, but I feel like since this movie came out it was over 35 years, so I think there's enough generations of Mario fa fanatics out there that can really understand the source material. And I seen interviews and the people making this movie even admit they're Mario fans. So I think have making a Mario Brothers movie now makes a lot of sense because there's more lore and more games to work off with. So I really had a really great time watching this. It, there is some little nitpicks here or there, but I had a fantastic time watching this movie. I It's a movie I watch again and again and always brings joy to me. I guess people's problems they had with this movie is that I guess there's not much to learn from this movie. Like when you watch the Spider-Verse movies that there's tons of things to learn. Like I I just recently watched an Ultraman movie and a lot of people like that because you do kind of learn something through their characters but I guess you don't learn something enough but it the, the characters were just fine. The the story, if you're a Mario fanatic like I am, this is a perfect movie. It's amazing they give it a green splat, and for its most craziest opinions, I remember reading a comment someone made, and they were like, they can't trust Rotten Tomatoes these days. Like, come on, Rotten Tomatoes, try to g cut some, cut this movie some slack. But anyways, this was a fun movie, it's a, it's a love letter to video games, it made over a billion dollars, so I was happy it made over a billion dollars, I mean, it's a movie that really captures the Mario spirit, so, and we might be getting a sequel, and also, there's a mid credit scene where they build up Yoshi, like, Yoshi might make, well, of course Yoshi's gonna make an appearance in the sequel, why put that there, but... I kind of hoping they do, you know how in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 they cast the original actress who voiced Tails in the video games in the movie? I kind of hope they do that but with Yoshi. You have enough celebrity actors, I feel like this can still work. But anyways, th that's my full review on the Super Mario Brothers movie. I hope you all loved it as much as I did. And I hope you all loved this full review. What are your thoughts? And... Hope to see you next time, and let's-a-go!